In this lecture, I will talk about paraprotein-related kidney diseases. Uh, first of all, uh, what are paraproteins? Uh, most commonly, we think of them as abnormal immunoglobulins um, created by clonal proliferation of plasma cells or B cells. And uh, these circulating abnormal monoclonal proteins can have different effects on tissues. Uh, so in the kidney, uh, depending on the properties of these pr proteins and their affinities, and also how weird they are, uh, they may decide to deposit um, in the tissue, or they actually sometimes don't deposit, but they filter through the glomerulus, and then they can cause tubular problems. Um, I will mostly talk about these two categories, but uh, you can also imagine that some of these paraproteins don't do either of these things, but they can cause functional problems. Uh, for example, they can affect um, different systems like um, a coagulation cascade and so on. Um, and uh, as I said, you know, I will not focus on that in this short video. Uh, so first, when we talk about deposition diseases, um, there are two main categories, amyloid and non-amyloid. Um, amyloids are um, basically a group of proteins uh, with similar uh, characteristics. Uh, they tend to form uh, beta pleated sheets that will form randomly arranged fibrils, and um, uh, the, the, these materials have certain properties on concrete stain. Uh, alternatively, you may have non-amyloid deposition um, when concrete stain is also negative, uh, and we collectively call these uh, disorders uh, monoclonal immunoglobulin uh, deposition diseases. So we will talk first about these uh, two. Um, so in amyloid, you see this kind of like uh, deposition of this amorphous acellular material that starts off usually in the mesangium and then goes down the capillary walls and it destroys the entire structure basically from um, the, the, the mesangial expansion to obliteration of some of the capillary loops. Uh, it also uh, creates these deposits in the tubules or tubular basal membranes and in, in the interstitium uh, and you can have uh, pretty significant vascular uh, deposition as well. Uh, this material uh, does not uh, stain with silver, uh, so uh, silver can be quite helpful um, because this is um, a kind of a material or, or uh, protein mixture that doesn't really um, uh, pick up the silver stain. So the basal membranes will still stain, as you see here, tubular basal membrane and Bowman's capsule, but um, the, the material that's deposited will not stain. Uh, it will stain with Congo red, as I mentioned before, uh, and you see here that uh, you have this kind of like red uh, reaction on light microscopy, and when you polarize that same section, uh, you will see uh, green birefringens um, uh, under polarized light, and this is really what is characteristic of amyloid doses. This is how we define amyloid doses. So, Amyloid is a congruent positive material that gives you this uh, green birefringens under polarized light. What is not congruent positive, it's not amyloid, basically. Uh, so how this congruent works, it's basically, um, when you look at uh, the, to the left, you see actually these uh, amyloid fib fibers, um, and um, under congruent stain, uh, these molecules of congruent will actually um, bind to these uh, uh, fibrils in a certain way that once you polarize the light, you get that br green birefringence. Um, under electron microscopy, all amyloids pretty much look very similar. Uh, here you have a capillary loop um, to the right that is relatively spared, and you have a couple of red cells, and then you have these um, uh, really uh, tremendous distortions here, uh, deposits of uh, amorphous material that is made of these uh, fibrils. When you go really on high power, and this is probably about 80 to 100,000 times magnified, uh, you see these non-branching, randomly arranged uh, fibrils that are usually between 8 and 12 nanometers in uh, diameter. We can measure this on electron microscopy, and it's very um, helpful to, to know that the measures. Uh, as I already kind of uh, uh, mentioned, uh, amyloid is a, not a, a single protein. There are a number of different uh, proteins that can uh, form amyloid, 
And uh, in the kidney, most important one is this primary or myeloma, multiple myeloma associated amyloid that is made of um, immunoglobulins, most commonly lambda light chain, but it can be kappa light chain or um, heavy chain or both um, heavy and light chain um, amyloid. Um, second most important amyloid is reactive amyloid or AA amyloid, which is made of um, serum uh, protein A or serum amyloid A, uh, which is um, basically uh, occurring in high concentrations in inflammatory conditions, and then it pre precipitates down uh, in the form of um, um, amyloid in the kidney, but also other tissues. Um, so these two types, primary uh, or myeloma-associated and reactive amyloid, I would say they probably uh, comprise more than 95% uh, of um, our cases of uh, renal amyloidosis. This is how lambda uh, light chain uh, amyloid would look like. So you always have to compare between kappa and lambda to say that something is restricted to one of them. Uh, so this is uh, obviously uh, reacting only with lambda light chain. Uh, but sometimes, you know, we have um, this protein A uh, or reactive amyloid in which both um, light chains would be equal or negative, and then you would stain additionally with protein A and then you would uh, get a positive reaction. Um, so we can routinely pick up um, the primary amyloid doses because we uh, routinely perform uh, kappa and lambda light chains, but also all of the other uh, heavy chains and immunoglobulins in general. Uh, so the, the routine immunofluorescence does um, really pick up uh, uh, primary amyloid nicely. And then we, we can confirm it by Congored and other um, methods. Um, if the the position is uh, still present, but it's not really forming amyloid, it's uh, giving you negative uh, Congo red, and you still have you know uh, deposits there. Uh, we we put all of that all of those disorders into one category uh, called the monoclonal immunoglobulin deposition disease. Uh, most of the time we will deal with actually uh, kappa light chain deposition disease. So lambda light chain tends to form amyloid doses and kappa light chain tends to form what we call kappa light chain deposition disease or just light chain deposition disease. Um, and it looks a little bit different than amyloid. It's again nodular, but these nodules are not made of protein. They're made of matrix basically. So when you stain with silver, um, the, the silver will be black and it will be positive because it's made, the, these nodules are made of matrix. And then the light chain will be kind of like dispersed in, in this matrix material. Um, the congruent will be negative, as I mentioned, and uh, there is no uh, polarized light when you polarize the section. And uh, immunofluorescence will tell you which light chain is the positive, and as I said, most commonly it will be kappa. Um, also, the deposits can be seen along the tubular basal membranes, and they become a little bit thicker and more prominent, and uh, they will light up with, with the light chain that um, is uh, restricted to. Um, and then by electromicroscopy, you can see these deposits as very dense, powdery, uh, and then they go along the uh, tubular basal membranes, but also glomerular basal membranes, and you see uh, this kind of like um, uh, uh, powdery, dense deposition. Um, if the paraprotein, for whatever reason, does not deposit in a tissue, uh, it may actually filter through the glomerulus and it may create uh, tubular problems. Uh, it can get reabsorbed by tubules and cause tubular dysfunction, even with, with the Fanconi syndrome, um, or cause um, what we call um, uh, either crystal store and tubulopathy when you see little crystals or just in general light chain tubulopathy. Um, but sometimes uh, that's not the case, and the, the uh, light chains or um, uh, these paraproteins actually remain in the lumen uh, of, the, of the tubule, and uh, they form casts. Um, so when we get uh, cast nephropathy, uh, we call that also myeloma kidney. So uh, patients with myeloma can have as you can imagine, can have different manifestations. They can have amyloid doses, they can have kappa light chain deposition disease, but if they form casts, that's when we say they have myeloma kidney. 
So this is how those casts would look like. You have these PS negative fractured casts that elicit a lot of uh, inflammation and uh, uh, multinuclear giant cell reaction. Um, and then you will have also a lot of eosinophils and lymphocytes and whatnot in the um, interstitium. Here you have this um, on H&E stain, the same kind of a picture with um, uh, fractured um, casts uh, that uh, are surrounded by multinucleated giant cells, um, and you also see this um, um, interstitial inflammation as well. By immunofluorescence, you can tell which ones are, um, which, which casts uh, are lightened up. So uh, most commonly in our hands, it's lambda light chains, but some other uh, centers report kappa light chain as the more common uh, form of uh, cas nephropathy. It doesn't really matter as long as you know that they are uh, monoclonal. Um, so that would be um, basically my short review of paraprotein-related kidney disease. Uh, of course, this is not, you know, um, incorporating all of the variants, but the, these most important ones I went over, such as amyloid, cupolytic deposition disease, and uh, myeloma kidney. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, I hope you jo join me on my uh, other uh, videos. Thank you.